Okay, so now to finish off our creature design, we have this clone stamp layer, which is going to help us with structural things. It's also going to help us merge textures together. So this clone stamp layer, which is separate than our combined layer underneath. In fact, I'll label the combined layer. It's a safe place for you to try merging different textures together. So I'm still at 100% opacity, which is pretty crazy. So now, now that I've done that major shift there with the shoulder, I'm going to change that opacity down to about 50%, 60%. And I can take this red of the feathers and I can mold it into here, you know, under the shoulder. Let's see, where exactly do I want it? Remember, I'm copying from multiple layers here. Blending in. I want to soften my edge even more to a 0% hardness because now I'm blending with lower opacity. I can take the, the fur from the, the bottom and kind of use that at this lower opacity to blend some of these textures together. With the bear's fur, I can map that a little bit onto the edge of the wings. So that, that feels more believable. I can take this edge and slowly map it onto the rest of the feathers so it doesn't feel like such an abrupt change. And this is all safely on another layer. And just little spot treatments. If I need to extend that bear's fur, further behind the wing, I can do that. So now the quills are kind of going back and forth. Same thing here. So instead of erasing away, I'm able to, to basically paint with those textures of these different layers. And right now I'm only doing it at 60%, but as I do it more and more, it becomes more and more opaque. This is why the um, the tablet is so useful today because you get to control how large the section you're stamping is based on how much pressure you use on your stylus. But I'm going to encourage you to be pretty broad with your use of the clone stamp here because it's safely on an, a, a new layer. and at a low opacity. So I'm wrapping that fur around those feathers. And still the feathers are showing up underneath. See, I can take that shadow from that fur and put it here. Take that highlight, put it here. So this reminds me a little bit more of that taxidermy analogy. You know, taking the parts from the animals you want, just rearranging them. With Photoshop, we get to do this with textures. We get to blend the, the feathers with the fur and the scales and make them all kind of match. And we can always go to a lower opacity and a bigger brush to do it more generally. And it will help mix the colors as well. Make everything a little bit more believable. Now the more extreme textures you have, the muddier this can start to look. but it does a lot to kind of soften transitions and to bring colors closer together.
So I like the fur of the tail, it's really strong, so I can kind of map that into the leg a little bit. I'm only doing a 27% opacity, so it's very subtle at first. But the more I hit it, the stronger it will get. Same thing with the, the legs and the talons. Now, what I am trying to do, I'm trying to limit this to only the internal edges. I'm trying not to go to the outside edges too much because then they'll just be blurry brush strokes on the outside edge. So this is all for internal textures. And then I'll show you how we do a final cleanup once we're happy with this. The other thing we can do on this combined layer, I can bring some fur back into it here, is we can dodge and burn the whole thing once it's together. So I can kind of sink these barbs from the flowers into the fur of the tail by using this clone stamp. So it is a great kind of overall finishing texture pass tool, which will work wonders for some of your designs. Now it can get overused. This is why we do it on a separate layer. And when it's used just too much, it can start to look washed out. <clears throat> okay. Let's see, maybe I want to bring a little bit of this texture to knock back the whites here. They feel a little bit too strong. A little bit of that texture. To darken the snout. Maybe a little bit of this red uh, no. around the eye, but not on the eye. Just a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit of that red. Nah. <laughs> I guess do it really slightly on the pelt and then knock it back. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And in the quills. So it's a way to bring kind of your color accents around to different parts. And it's very subtle. But it can be very, very effective. Okay, lastly, I'm going to bring a little bit of fur into these scales here as that wing's coming up. Feels more dynamic. Okay, so now I can do overall dodging and burning. So this is without the clone, or this is with the clone stamp, this is without. This is what the clone stamp did. <laughs> Just these little textures, these little areas of transition that I painted in on its own, on its own layer. With the creature behind it, looks like that. Without the clone stamp, doesn't have those transitions as clearly defined. Now you can always erase away from your clone stamp layer, wherever you think you overdid it. And you can also, this is helpful, play with the levels and adjustment of just your clone stamp layer. You can push the shadows darker. Because remember, they just copied from existing pixels, but now you can actually brighten or darken those pixels or limit the highlights of them, which I usually recommend. Even limit the shadows of them a little bit. 
So they're not too strong. Okay, very good. You can play with the color balance of it, but I, that usually would change it. Now what do I do? Now I go to my combined layer, the one underneath the clone stamp layer, and just in case I screwed up and I clone stamped into the outside edges of my silhouette, I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous at 32, select the outside, and it will show me any little debris that still made it through. So I have some here, so I'm going to use my lasso. Instead of using the refine edge to soften it even more, I'm just going to use my lasso to capture them. So all these little floating selections, if there are any. And then you're going to hit delete, and that will also delete out anything from your clone stamp, or sorry, you hit delete, you go to your clone stamp layer, and that, that moves that selection to your clone stamp layer, and then you hit delete from that, so that you make sure your clone stamp is clean. And then you can decide how you want to save it with a gray background, with a black background, with a white background. I generally save it with the white background because that's how it's going to print. But on white, your edges can sometimes look a little too sharp. But that's that won't be true on your on your background setting. But now with the white background, I might do some final clone stamping to the leg and then I'm going to submit it. Just bring that texture in. Bring this texture in. So effective. That clone stamp approach, so, so helpful, especially when you're more targeted with it. And almost build anatomy just with that clone stamp tool. So to, to clone stamp, you put it on a new blank layer. I actually call it the clone stamp layer. And then I this is the tool here. It's underneath the brush. You hold you set your brush options, and then you hold down option to target what you want to steal from. So if I want to steal from here, I hold down option, I get a little bullseye, I click, and then I move my cursor to where I want to paint with what with those pixels. And you'll see that that little crosshair will follow where you're stealing them from. So for instance, if I want to make my initials out here out of this texture, I click, hold down option, and then I can paint out here with that texture. And I'm just doing it at a low opacity that you can control all that. Yeah, so I might want to bring a little bit of this down and into the stomach. Yeah, okay. So I think I'm done with mine. It will change as we put it into different environments. So what do I do? I save it as a Photoshop file, and then for the first time, we are going to submit this to PhotoBucket, not as a JPEG, because I want to see how well you cleaned it up. We are going to submit it with the background turned off, and we're going to submit it as a PNG. So it's a free floating sticker. So what do I do to do that? I turn off all my background, so I just see the grid, and then I say File, Save As, to the desktop, and instead of a Photoshop format, I want a PNG format. It's an online file format. 